I'm gonna organize this by the destruction it causes to your life, starting with level one. The Insomniac. Now this is based on two things. The ones who do stimulants to stay awake for days on end doing a bender, or the people who cannot sleep. And while neither are great, they both often suffer from hallucinations. Hey, what do you say to me? Take this. Ah, my hand. I ain't gonna take that. I gotta get some sleep. I must be hallucinating. I mean, what even is that? After you stay awake for too long, your brain unironically starts to dysfunction, and to add to that, repetitive sleep deprivation can lead to full-on brain damage, but yet again, so does half the stuff in this world. Damn, what happened to you, bro? I pulled an all-nighter. Oh, hell nah. And here we are with level two, dangerously disorientated. I remember back when I was in school, I'd spend all night on my phone and then sleep for maybe two hours and then proceed to wake up for school. And I would really have to say this with 100% honesty, don't do this since it's extremely dangerous. So when I was driving to school, I was nodding off. And even after that I arrived at school, I started to fall out of my chair and that would jolt me back awake. So today we're gonna talk about the history of, oh. Good morning, sunshine. Go to detention right now. And if I'm calling you out with that one, go to sleep after this video. There was even a study comparing drinking alcohol and driving versus driving with being awake for long periods of time. For example, being awake for 24 hours is the equivalent of a 0.10 blood alcohol level, which going off the average American man's weight, that is about six drinks. Sir, do you know why I'm pulling you over? What's up? No, not, not a clue. You dumb or something, you literally just hit a kid. No, 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 that, that was a dream. Huh? And then there's level three, the forgetful one. Let's keep in mind it's better to sleep than to stay awake all night studying. So I'd like to believe sleeping is overpowered. I'm sure we've all been to school when you didn't sleep well and suddenly your brain has to find its way from the dream realm to reality. I say most accidents in life are caused by some form of impairment. Hey dad, was I planned? No, you're just a happy little impaired accident. What? And I mean this is no surprise since sleeping is where your brain transfers your short term memory to long term memory. But this is all part of the dangerous things such as weed, alcohol, and all their drugs since the thing is, when you take those substances at night, it interrupts your REM sleep. And so if you use the jazz cabbage to sleep, you'll never truly get a good night's rest. Oh wow, why do I feel so bad? Oh. You literally poisoned yourself. And now we have arrived at level 4. Ye old 888 schedule. The golden standard is completely whack. It's the idea of the 888 schedule, which if you don't know what that is, it's eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and eight hours of free time. But in reality, this never plays out the way you'd assume. And it usually plays out as a sacrifice to all things that are good for your health. Instead of cooking, you eat fast food. Instead of getting a full night's rest, you shock on an energy drink. And in the long term, this will deteriorate all aspects of you. All right, after the commute, the unpaid breaks, and cooking, I'm left with five hours of free time but I could just sleep five hours instead. At the end of the day, I firmly believe that most societal ills are based around a non-functioning system. The path of least resistance will consistently be the fundamental outcome of the majority. And when the system isn't sustainable without mental health deterioration, we will see the increase in drug use, crime, and obesity. But what are those things? Coping mechanisms. So what does that mean? Well, in the stance of society, in itself, it leads to the mentally soft becoming self-destructive. I mean, let me frame a scene for you here. Oh man, I'm late for work, I gotta go. Yeah, I'll take an eight-piece tendy meal with a large coffee. Oh, that caffeine crash is hitting. Oh, time for some more caffeine. I'll play some video games to keep awake. Oh, shoot, I, I, I gotta sleep. I only got four hours till I gotta wake up. Oh, I'm already in bed. I'll, I'll brush my teeth tomorrow. And then there's level five. The sacrifice. To keep this simple and clean, this is pretty much means you just have to make all the required sacrifices to get your sleep in. This could mean not going out with your friends or playing video games, limiting blue light before sleep, or even to the extent of seeing sunlight off the start of the morning to get your circadian rhythm started. Unfortunately, our bodies and brains are still assimilated to the caveman times, so we must return to monkey to live properly. Ah, uh, good morning, America. All right, let's get it. I mean really, at the end of it all, you make your choice, suffer now or later. You either will feel sleep deprived all the next day or you can sacrifice an hour or two of your free time and while I know it's not ideal, it's the way of life. That is unless you find your way out of the rat race and even still sometimes it remains that way even after escaping it. Alright, I've become a landlord, let's go! Here's the escape from the rat race! Hey, my toilet is broken, can you come and fix it? It's flooding the place. Bitch, what? Now the strange one. 
Level 6, the obsessive dream chaser. When we think of sleep, we usually think of getting rested, but every night you dream, even if you don't remember it. These are the whimsical masters of sleep, so much so that they can control their dreams, and I'd say at this point you might as well be considered a master of sleep, but not in the traditional sense. Ooga booga, I'm the boogeyman. You really think you're in control? Who do you think you are? Wait, who am I? Wait, where am I? You're in my head. Boo. To fully embrace life with keeping records of the currency of your dreams and the symbolism is a great idea. I'd like to believe this is an aspect of the full embrace. While we are definitely diving into escapism territory when it's anything outside of our natural life, you gotta be aware when you do something to be avoidant of responsibility, you are partaking in escapism. The two polarities you use for measurements, mental resistance will show you that all fear is just illusion. To change the unit of measurement will directly change the result, meaning that all mental resistance is just a wrong set of measurement polarities. What the fuck are you talking about? Well. What gives you anxiety? Talking to women, I suppose. So the measurement you are using is a scale of her rejecting you or accepting you. But the issue is if the slider is moved away from the acceptance side even a tiny bit, you will have fear and doubt. And unfortunately, that will spiral you into insecurity and much farther bringing you down to a rejection. Well, how should I judge it then? So simply, you need to make it where it's an upward spiral of self-reinforcement instead of a downward one of self-doubt. The way to do this is by switching the two poles of measurement. Well, okay, I'm following. What are the two poles of measurement? All right, you ready for this? Yes! So instead of seeing a scale of rejection or acceptance, you instead see it as an approach of self-doubt versus self-acceptance. I mean, if she doesn't seem interested, it's okay because you push towards acceptance of self, and that means the results of the interaction were never the weight of the situation, but instead the acceptance of the result. Also, before you even partake in the interaction, you are at the bottom of the scale, meaning once you take action, it's an upward spiral to the top and reinforces the top. Well, what's your source for this information? I've had a dream about this two nights in a row, and I had to figure out what it meant. And now for the one and only, level 7, the sleep doctor. This is the part where I'm going to drop all the nerdy details, since let's be real, to be at the top level, one must understand the conditions Mr. Sandman has allotted, since without strict guidelines on sleep, you won't ever be on a perfect sleep schedule. What's, what's going on? Who the hell are you? I'm Mr. Sandman. Go to sleep now. Ah! So let's start off with some absolute peak dork information. Chronotypes, and this is simply sleep patterns, since supposedly there are four different ones, so starting with the most common being the bear, which is where they wake up around 7 a.m. and go to bed around 11 p.m., and most are productive around 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then there's the lion, which wakes up at 6 a.m. and goes to bed at 10 p.m., and are most productive around 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then we have the wolf. They usually wake up at 7.30 a.m. and go to bed at midnight, being most productive between 1 to 5 p.m. And finally, we have the dolphin, who wakes up at 6 a.m. and goes to sleep at 11 p.m., being most productive between 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Wait, wait, that only adds up to 95% of the population. What about the other 5%? He, know, he knows too much. Take him out. But it is also important to understand the half-life of caffeine, which is pretty much the time it takes for half of the caffeine to leave your body. The half-life is 5 hours, so let's say you have a cup of coffee which is about 100 milligrams of caffeine, it will be about 25 milligrams 10 hours later. Why can't I sleep? No, that couldn't be it. I must have insomnia. And I worked really hard on this video right here, and it performed very poorly, so I'd appreciate if you'd give it a watch. That's all for this one, guys. Thanks for watching.